Hi, today I'll be sharing with you a case of a, a 55-year-old man who has uh, loose zonules, which is very evident uh, by this subtle phacodonosis which can be seen in the slit lamp. And you can see the lens is slightly wobbly here. Uh, he sustained a blunt trauma many years back and now he's come for uh, the cataract surgery. The challenges here are, apart from the uh, subluxated or mildly subluxated lens, I think it looks like a more of a generalized weakness of the zonules. The cataract also looks to be slightly dense. So here I'm making two side port incisions. And the strategy is to see uh, how the cap zonules are and the first inclination we usually get is when we do the rexis. Uh, when I'm trying to puncture the rexis and see, uh, it's very clear that the entire bag is moving around here. And this is a very clear cut sign that you know the zonules are definitely not very healthy. So the next strategy always would be to use a micro forceps in instead of a needle uh, to do the rexis. It is much more easier and probably less traumatic to zonules and definitely ensures much better control. So my aim is to do around 5, 5.5 millimeter rexes. And hydro dissection is probably the most important step in these eyes with loose zonules. It's very critical that the, the nucleus in the lens is separated from the capsular bag. And here uh, the hydro dissection is not very effective in separating the uh, lens from the capsular bag. So my next strategy here would be to stabilize the bag using capsular hooks. So I'm using capsule hooks here. My next port uh, for the capsule hook would be opposite to the one which I made initially. And again, I'm using uh, the hook to engage the capsule and retract it back. One more hook goes in and it holds the the capsular bag and finally my last port would be just beside my main uh, phaco incision so I'm using four capsular hooks to stabilize the bag I'm gently manipulating the nucleus to ensure that it is totally free from the capsular bag my usual strategy in eyes with slightly denser nucleus and loose zonules is to do a stop and chop technique and I'm sculpting here my chopper is supporting the nucleus while i'm doing the sculpting the trenching is done quite deep up to about 80 to 90 percent and i'm gently trying to laterally separate the two hemisections i'm chopping this first hemisection into at multiple levels to ensure that the first piece is out and similar chopping procedures are done subsequently divide each hemisection into three small fragments and each of them is emulsified at the pupillary plane. The same process is repeated with the remaining hemisection. I usually would like to support uh, the chopper on top of the hemineucleus to ensure uh, that the flying nuclear fragments don't come and hit the corneal endothelium. So once the last bit of the nuclear fragment is removed, I'm going ahead and uh, doing my aspiration of the cortex here. So a, a good hydro dissection ensures that your cortex does not cling too much to your capsular bag. So now is the time for the CTR to go inside. So care has to be taken that it doesn't go into the sulcus and it has to go into the bag. So I make doubly sure that it has gone into the bag. Now my next strategy is to loosen the, the hooks a little bit so that I create some space between the iris and the capsule, entry capsule. The plan is to not to place the lens in the bag rather than place it in the sulcus, that is the haptics are in the sulcus and then achieve an optic capture pushing it back. So by this, we hope that the long-term stability of the lens and the bag is better compared to placing the lens in the bag. So I'm trying to dial the lens into the uh, sulcus here. Then I'm removing these capsule hooks. Problem is the pupil comes down when we immediately remove it, but it was causing hindering for me to manipulate the lens. So that's the reason 
I needed to remove it and I just kept one hook here I just want to ensure that the haptic which is gone inside the bag I'm trying to mobilize it and both the haptics are in the sulcus so once they are I'm sure that the optic and the haptic both are in the sulcus now uh, I remove uh, the sodium hyaluronate which I've used here before tucking the lens inside to cause uh, the to effect the optic capture just using a little bit of a triamcinone acetate to ensure that there's no vitreous prolapse happening in this whole procedure then gently push the lens or nudge the lens behind posteriorly and this will ensure that it the optic portion of the lens goes behind the anterior capsule but the haptics will still be in the sulcus the whole idea is uh, the bag is stabilized by the ring and we are going to push the optic only into the bag and keep this uh, haptics in the sulcus uh, probably this is going to help us for long term uh, stability of the lens uh, immediate post op there was some striae corneal edema but which we eventually cleared out and uh, 10 days post op uh, it looks fine i was interested to know what happens to the phacodonosis well the pseudo phacodonosis is still there but slightly lesser i believe than when compared to placing the lens in the bag the patient is so far happy so thank you for watching